Hey, Gary.
Okay, one, two, three. Yep, it's on. It's on. One, two, two. Two, one, two. It's calling you. Yeah. that y'all ate your Wheaties this morning didn't you good morning good morning good morning happy Mother's Day to everybody to us mothers and those that made us mothers and the ones we try not to kill on a daily basis that are our children so happy Mother's Day welcome to Highlands First United Methodist or Highlands United Methodist Church this morning we're happy you're here Thank you for joining us on Facebook if you couldn't be here in person, but we're glad that you're all here in each way you can be. So, big round of applause for Christy and Ed and all their crew in the kitchen for that fantastic breakfast this morning. It was those tomatoes, oh, tomato season, so happy. Um, so I want to remind you this morning that there are prayer slips on the tables and at the end of the row um, scattered around the room. And um, if you have a special prayer that's on your heart or you have a joy that you want to share with the church, just put it on the little piece of paper and we will nail it to the cross in just a moment. Also, if you're a visitor and you want to sign up for our weekly newsletter or our, uh, Pastor Randy's email, you can fill out the little form that's on the, the pad as well. So... With that, we'll let these fine fellows and this one fantastic mama right here play us, Jesus Loves Me. So if you'll all stand up and encourage them. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so Little ones to him belong They are weak but he is strong Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me The Bible tells me so Jesus loves me, this I know, as he loved so long ago, taking children on his knee, saying, let them come to me. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me still today, walking 
loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. memory unseen angels send from somewhere to my soul how they linger ever near me and the secret past unfold Pray memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul, oh, in the stillness of the midnight, precious secret seem to unfold. Father, loving mother, fly across the lonely and old home scene of my childhood in fond memories of peace. So now it is time to share our concerns at the cross. This is where those little slips of paper come in. If you have something that is just weighing on your soul and, and you want to just turn it over to God, this is the, the moment to do that. Um, or if you have a joy that you want to share with the church that you've been praying for and it, it finally has come to light, the conclusion for that, you may also write it on a slip of paper. They'll pray over them on Tuesdays, and then they'll burn them. The band will give us a little music.
thank you, Lord, for every person in this room. Um, Lord, thank you for them being here and to celebrate this Mother's Day in your presence with surrounded by the ones we love. It's just a, a humbling and an honor and a privilege. So thank you, Lord, and, and thank you for them feeling comfortable enough to turn over their concerns to you this morning. In your name we pray, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we have some joys. Does anybody here have a joy this morning? Oh, I think Pastor Randy's got a mic back there. Save me my steps. My watch is charged up. I could have kept up with them today. Give you grace. My joy today is that I have my son David up here from Marietta, Georgia for Mother's Day. Always a good one. Anybody else this morning? I was going to make you bend down and use that one. <laughs> My mother is here today, and she's been coming with me on a few Sundays, but she's been in, in, in poor health, and this is a big deal for her to be here this Mother's Day and uh, to come to Highland. She's been coming up here. She enjoys it, but... I've got both my, my ladies with me today, my mom and my wife, and uh, this is a big deal. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Jeannie, Jeannie. Nope. Uh, I also have a joy today. Our daughter Rachel from Asheville is here, and she's hopefully will be a mom on Wednesday or Thursday. So I have one this morning. Um, as a mom who homeschools, I know there's a couple in the room that can attest to how difficult that is. That young man right there placed in the 99th percentile across the country on his EOG this yeah. week. So yeah. I'm pretty, pretty excited. And as a mom, I have to take every opportunity I can to embarrass him. So <laughs> there's that. Um, we have... Birthdays and anniversaries, Mr. Clark? Ah, right there. Okay. We have Patty and Doug and Timmy and Greer and John and Glenn and Kristen and Colson and Alex. Are any of those people here? Well, there she is. There's one back there. There's Colson, another mom embarrassing a kid. Yes. We do everybody. We're going to do everybody. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. You know who you are. Happy birthday to you. Awesome. And Colson is now laying prostrate across the back of the church. <laughs> All right. And we have Hammond and Mitzi's anniversary this week. So happy anniversary to them. I don't see them out there, but happy anniversary. And we have some slides this morning. So this is from Elizabeth Gordon, and it's Carl and Mary Beth Lindquist. Um, used to be the, the preacher here at the church. I know. And then here's Elizabeth and her family, and Carl and Mary Beth, too. Great picture. Oh, Elizabeth and Carl. This is from our porch. So Ransom and I have these two little Junkos, Janice and Jimmy, and um, we're going to assume that it's the same ones that have been coming back for the last four or five years, and this is their, their babies. Um, I leave this dead basket of stuff on my front porch because they make their nest in it every year, and I feel really bad about replacing it. So they have three little babies, and they're so cute. 
right, and now it's time for our giving portion of our service this morning. You can either, there's a kiosk back there. You can go to our website. You can go to the Facebook page. You can drop it in the snail mail. You can drop it in the box on the front porch. Or you can put it in the basket as we pass it around. Any of those ways. The band is going to give us some music that I said, it always makes me nervous to take up the offering because I feel like I'm at a greased pig chasing contest because of that music they play. And it, we'll be nice. you'll be nice? Okay. <laughs> was so much better. I didn't feel like I had to run. <laughs> we can bow our heads this morning. Thank you, Lord, again for everybody here. Thank you for their generous hearts and their giving souls this morning. Just please help us as members of this church and guide us on how to use these wonderful gifts to honor you. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, and now we have a special portion of the show. Darren and Jennifer are going to sing, and I know his mama is going to be extra proud of this song. It's called Medals for Mothers. A 
I'm not crying. All of y'all are crying. <laughs> that was beautiful. Lee, I love your voice, but... Um, oh, I know. I'm the same way. I mean, you bring, a, you bring us to tears, too, but... <laughs> that was beautiful. 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 Um, so now, we're going to read our scripture reading this morning. It comes from Acts 17, tw uh, 22 through 31. And I am just going to go ahead and say this. I am going to mispronounce some words, okay? So just bear with me. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allowed the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of our own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the heart and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given us assurance to all by rising him from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Thank you, Jeannie. You know, I was just having a conversation this past week with some other clergy. We were talking about difficult words to pronounce, and if, if a difficult word to pronounce gets pronounced incorrectly at the beginning of the service, then how we as clergy try to keep mispronouncing it so we stay <laughs> consistent. <laughs> but you did it. You, you did it. You did it beautifully. You did it uh, better than I could. So thank you. Let me just say a word, Jennifer and Darren. My goodness, what a blessing. What a true blessing that was. Joanne, I know it blessed you. It blessed us. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So happy Mother's Day to all of our moms and all children of mothers. We wish you all a happy Mother's Day uh, today. It's good to have you with us. I know we have guests here. You've come, uh, those of uh, you who could have come to honor your mom and worship with your mom today, and so we know how special that is, and so we celebrate and give thanks uh, for your presence here with us 
uh, today. And I'm going to go ahead and just off the bat say that I'm violating uh, today one of the basic tenets of, of uh, textual preaching. Let me just go ahead and make that disclaimer uh, at the beginning. The Apostle Paul, I'm sure, would have me spend uh, some time reflecting on his strategic argument with the Athenians and really the wizardry with which he took their religious practices and interpreted them through a Christian lens. And it really is a good model for how we can share our faith without being threatened by the faith of someone else, how we could share our faith while still honoring the faith and religious practice of others. And so a preacher, a real smart, wise preacher, could spend some time with that. But I'm not doing any of that this morning. Read a, a book when I was in seminary in my homiletics, my preaching class, by Edward Farley, and the title of the book was Preaching Gospel. And he makes this argument that preachers don't need to worry about preaching the text, they need to preach the gospel. And I said to my homiletics professor as we were reading through that book, I said, that really messes with my head because everything I've been taught as a preacher is that obviously you stay close to the text, you try to stay close to the text and faithful to the text. But I'm not doing that today. So my apologies to my homiletics professors uh, and, and, uh, and to the Apostle Paul, but I am going to use something Paul said to be the basis of the preaching moment here this morning. Paul's actually quoting uh, some of the Greek poets. Jeannie said it very well. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. We too are his offspring. When I looked at this text a few weeks back, thought about our time together today, that's what really jumped off the page at me. And so the title of the sermon this morning is Children of God. And I thought about, especially it being Mother's Day, that that just made sense, that we spent some time with this phrase, this singular phrase, this small phrase in a much larger bit of scripture where Paul talks about the fact that we are the offspring of God. So if you will allow me this morning, I'll spend some time reflecting on, on children of God. And I want to suggest to you too that the profound depth of the good news of this, that we are children of God, may be lost on us if we have never felt like orphans. If we have always felt God's love in some capacity, if we've never experienced what it is to have doors shut in our face, if we don't know what it's like to be pushed aside, pushed away, to be ostracized, to be viewed as less than somehow, if we have somehow never experienced the message from society or the church that we're not worthy of God's love, if we've never experienced that, then maybe the message that we are children of God doesn't really resonate with the deep places of our souls. If I've pretty much always accepted that I'm a child of God, then that really comes as no great revelation to me. Somebody tells me I'm a child of God. And if it's not really news for me, it's hard for it to be good news for me. It has to be news before it's good news. So I don't know where you are on the spectrum today. Maybe you don't feel very loved today. Hopefully all of you feel loved and accepted and appreciated and valued and all of those wonderful things that we all need as human beings and maybe you've never considered the opposite of that. Well, maybe you have. Maybe you have had those moments where you felt like you didn't belong quite so much. If that's the case, hopefully this stumbling, bumbling preacher today trying to make the point that we are children of God will be news, good news for us today. Maybe it would help if we put ourselves in the in the place of the Athenians this morning, if I can go back to the text for just a minute, in the tradition of those who were being addressed by Paul, those for whom the concepts of the Christian religion would have been new, they had certainly religious practices, but there was a newness in what Paul was offering to them, this newness that God's love was embedded in Jesus, this newness that Paul offered in front of the Areopagus that day, which I think is exactly the way Jeannie said it. So I gather with you this morning on this Mother's Day, on this day when we are going to celebrate Holy Communion, I can't help but think of the gift of table fellowship. 
I think of that primarily, again, because we're coming to the Lord's table and because it's Mother's Day. In the United Methodist Church, we also call this day the festival of the Christian home. And table fellowship is fundamental to expressions that we might experience at home of love and acceptance and belonging. I've been in contact with Bishop Will Willimon this week. Bishop Willimon will be preaching here at Highlands United Methodist Church at the 909 in our 11 o'clock service on June the 25th. Now, Bishop Willimon has written over 70 books. As I was thinking about the sermon today, I remembered a book that he wrote back in 1980 called Sunday Dinner. And sure enough, I had the book on my shelf. And so I went back and looked over it and I was rereading and reminding myself of Bishop Willimon's introduction in his book, The Sunday Dinner, The Lord's Table, Lord's Supper and the Christian Life. In the introduction, he talks about his experience as a young child having Sunday dinners at grandma's house. And he talked about how the children had their particular place at the table and there were moms and dads and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and that was a big gathering always every Sunday at grandma's house. And in the introduction, he writes these words, no one had to explain to me that I belonged or that I was loved. I learned all that at the Sunday dinner table. If someone had asked me, who are your people and what do they stand for? I would have responded quite honestly, my people are those who gather at grandmother's dinner table. At the table we were initiated, nurtured, and claimed into the family. There we participated in common memory, fellowship, and identity. There we found our place, our name, our story at the table. Now, for some of us here, Bishop Willimon's memory perhaps will bring back similar memories for us. We can recall perhaps a table filled with love and acceptance, sharing meals and stories around tables that shaped our identity, that even gave us the sense of belonging, that indeed helped us to know who we were and helped us to become who we are. Those tables where we had a place and we had the beautiful gift of belonging. And for those of us who have those kinds of memories that date back to our childhoods, those memories have grown sweeter through the years. But that's not everybody's story, of course. Bishop Willimon's memories would be very foreign to some people who haven't grown up with the blessing of that Sunday afternoon table or Sunday dinner or gathering of the family where they felt accepted and loved unconditionally. All families are not perfect, of course, and parents are not perfect. Not everybody knows the security of stability or the power inherent in place or the blessing of belonging. And while we're at it, let's just be honest and say that Mother's Day or Father's Day is not a happy day for everybody. I hope it's a day filled with joy and memory and celebration for everyone, but for some folks today brings back painful memories of a childhood that was far from perfect. Sometimes our imperfect parents pass on their imperfection to the children and it lasts a lifetime. And maybe today for some folks, the grief over a dear mother's death is particularly acute. Or for some folks, the, for some mothers, the death of a child is particularly raw today. Or for those individuals who, for one reason or another, were unable to bear children, maybe today is just a painful day. And so I just want to say to our gathering here and those of you worshiping with us at home, if, if any of that might be true for you, may God pour out a double portion of God's grace upon you. We have come here today to recall and to try to do our best to hear what the Apostle Paul credited the Greek poets with saying, we too are God's offspring, the God in whom we live and move and find our ultimate identity in whom we have our being. And so today I've simply come to invite you to join with me in giving thanks. Wherever you may be on the faith spectrum or on the memory spectrum today, I simply invite you to join with me in gathering and giving thanks to this God whom Paul proclaimed to the Athenians, this God who made God's love known through Jesus Christ, reminding us that we are children of God. And having that identity, we all have a place at the table. 
Much of how we experience love and acceptance and belonging is through table fellowship. The Bible bears witness to the reality that we all know that to break bread together, to share table fellowship is an act of acceptance, an act of community, an act of belonging and welcome. It's one of the things that got Jesus into trouble in the 15th chapter of Luke, for example, the The religious leaders, the Pharisees and the scribes, were furious with Jesus because they they were grumbling and they said, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Not enough that he said hello to them on the street corner. He sat at the table and he ate with them. It's no small thing to share a meal together. There is a level of intimacy. There is a level of fellowship and welcome and acceptance (laughs) and love and grace when we share a meal together. I traveled uh, this week to Duke to meet Nicole Kelson. Uh, Nicole is going to be our summer ministry intern. She'll live with us for 10 weeks here, beginning Memorial Day uh, weekend. So we had time to reflect, and she obviously wants to know more about the church, and she asked me uh, to tell her a little bit about uh, Highlands United Methodist Church. And, and uh, the first words out of my mouth were about food. 909 breakfast, Wednesday night drive through and sit down meals, Thursday joy group lunches, monthly breakfast for Methodist men and the American Legion. By the way, Don Germano spoke for our Methodist men, did a wonderful job on the Ascension uh, this past uh, Saturday, uh, yesterday, and he's going to be speaking for us Wednesday night, so I'll give a little plug for Don. I appreciate Don uh, so much. By the way, he's just published a book on John Wesley. Ask Don about that if you, uh, if you haven't heard about that yet. The monthly community table that Christy organizes and provides leadership for. The men's Tuesday morning breakfast gathering at Blue Bike. So much of our shared experience takes place around table fellowship. And it's not just like, it's not just because we like to eat, which we do. And it's not just because we are blessed to have the only Christy Martin on the planet, which we are. It's that we are blessed in the sharing of table fellowship. And we are blessed because table fellowship makes us know that we belong, that we have place, that we are welcome. With all of our imperfections, all of our fragmentations, all of our brokenness, we belong. To have a place at the table means that we are family. So today, by the way, before I move away from our Duke intern. This coming week, I'm going to have uh, uh, Nicole's email address. We'll put a little blurb in the newsletter this week. One of the real neat experiences of our Duke summer interns throughout the years has been table fellowship, individuals who will uh, take them out for lunch or for dinner. And so I hope that when you see her email address in the HUMC News that you'll send her an email and just say, welcome, we look forward to living having you live among us and be among us here this summer and just introduce yourself. And I hope you'll keep that information, that email address, and maybe invite her to, to lunch or to supper sometime while she's here. She'll be coming Memorial Day weekend. It is, I think, for many of our summer interns, that is some of the greatest memories they take with them, those moments meeting people and getting to know people and enjoying table fellowship. As the church... We bear witness that every human being created in the image of God is a person of sacred value and worth. As the church, we celebrate this this banquet of love, this feast of fellowship offered in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. At the table, we seek to model God's radical welcome and unconditional love, room for everyone. In his book, God's Companions, Reimagining Christian Ethics, Samuel Wells bears witness that for Christians, the defining experience of common life is the sharing of daily bread, and the epitome of sharing food is the Eucharist. We call this meal sometimes the Eucharist. It comes from a Greek word to give thanks, and that's what we do today. We give thanks. So... Let us come to the table in gratitude for God's love that invites us and meets us in the breaking of the bread and the giving of the cup. We come to the table because we have been invited 
We come because we believe that Christ is present at his table, present in our gathering, present when we gather in his name. We come to the table because we have a place. We come to the table because just as Bishop Willimon's early life was shaped by Sunday dinners at his grandmother's house, this holy meal shapes us and nurtures us and gives us our identity as the body of Christ gathering together as the church, giving us our identity as sisters and brothers, family. We come because like everyone created in the image of God, we are all children of God. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join with me in our liturgy before we receive communion this morning. You can see the the words behind me if you will repeat the words that are in the bold print. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us silently confess our private sins before God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed in us your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, 
and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This morning, in celebration and observance of Mother's Day, we will have our three stations uh, led by moms and children. Uh, mothers and children will be with us today. So I'm going to ask those who are going to be uh, helping us uh, serve communion this morning, if you'll come forward at this time. Because there is one loaf, we, though we are many, are one body, for we partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. We'll receive communion this morning by manner of intention. Uh, I'll give you instructions in just a moment when you come forward. The bread will be placed in your hand. I invite you to come simply in a spirit of receptivity with your hands cut and ready to receive. We don't take communion, we receive communion. It is gift. And so we'll place the bread into your hand. The cup will be offered. If you'll just take the bread and dip it into the cup. Again, I always say, a little flippantly sometimes, but I'm serious when I say, if you lose the bread in the cup, which can happen, please don't go fishing for it. We will give you another piece of bread. We also have prepackaged communion elements if you would prefer that, they are available up here, and so just let us know or let your server know. We'll be sure to get those to you. We also have some wafers that are gluten-free. If that's important for you, then let us know. We'll be sure that you get that as well. You do not have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a member of this denomination. You don't have to be a member of any church anywhere. We, as part of our open table theology in the United Methodist Church, we believe this is the Lord's table, and we believe everybody is welcome at the Lord's table. So in his name and for his sake, I bid you come. I will give you some direction in just a moment. Go ahead and see who's doing this. So, those of you who are sitting at the tables, you can stay there, uh, and Kay and James will come to you. So those of you at the back, I'm just going to invite you at the back when the station gets set up, if you'll just come down this aisle and just you can rotate right immediately back to your seat. Those of you here, if you will start at the very back, those of you sitting at the back, if you'll just come down here and again you can rotate here. Those of you here, just stay here. We'll come to you in just a minute. Okay, thank you. Feel free to come.
let you serve us, and then we'll serve you all, okay? to say thanks to our communion station servers. Would you give them a good round of applause? For some, this was their first time doing that. They did a lovely job. We're going to forego our final hymn. We will sing uh, I'll Fly Away. I'm going to turn it over to Jeannie, but listen, would you pray with me our, our prayer of thanksgiving? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jeannie? Thank you, Pastor Andy. What a beautiful sermon for this Mother's Day. As he told that story, I was reminded of my dad, who always invited every stranger he ran across in a day, I promise, ended up at our house for dinner. And it used to drive my mother crazy. We'd had two big tables full of people, and she'd go, would you quit bringing stray people home? And then he said, well, this might be the only meal they get today. So let's mm. welcome them to our table. Mm. So I invite you to welcome people to your table this week, even if it's just a smile. So if we could bow our heads and close in prayer. Thank you again. I know I've said it over and over, but I truly mean it. Thank you for everyone in this room. Thank you for letting them start their Sunday with us and you, Lord. Let them invite as many as they can to their table this week. In your name we pray. Amen. Now we can stand as you're able and fly away. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away. To a home on God's blessed shore, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, I by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life is grown, will I? Away. Like a bird from prison bars is flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days. When I die, I leave by and by. I